And the first part is to describe the effects of transforming a random variable by adding or subtracting a constant and multiplying or dividing by a constant. And again, this is a review from chapter two. Um, after that, uh, the second half, the second video of this, uh, we'll find the mean and standard deviation of the sum or differences of independent random variables, and then find probabilities involving those sums or differences of independent normal random variables. So in section 6.1, we learn that the mean and standard deviation give us important information about a random variable. So you should know how to calculate uh, the mean and the standard deviation uh, from a probability model. Uh, in this section, we'll learn how the mean and standard deviation are affected by transformations on random variables. So as I mentioned, in Chapter 2, we study the effects of linear transformations on the shape, center, and spread of a distribution. So we need to recall that if we add or subtract a constant, to each observation. When we add something uh, to measures of center, uh, measure of centers and location, it does not change the shape or the measures of spread. Uh, but it does add whatever we're adding to that measure of the center or, or any other measure of location. So in other words, if I was to add five to every data point, we would add five to whatever measure of center or location we're using. Uh, but it will not change the shape, and it will not change the measure of spread. But if we multiply each observation by a constant, so let's say if we multiply everything by 10, well, that will multiply the measure of center or location uh, by, that, by that same amount, by 10 in this case. Um, it will also multiply the measure of spread by whatever I multiplied by, but in absolute value, uh, because again, spread is not uh, measured in negative values, uh, it's always positive. Uh, but also, it does not change the shape of the distribution. So again, adding or subtracting, multiplying or dividing, will not change the shape of the distribution. So let's take a look. We've got a problem here. Pete's Jeep Tours offers a popular half-day trip in a tourist area. There must be at least two passengers for the trip to run. So you can see that's why our table starts at two. You got two passengers. And the vehicle will hold up to six passengers. So this will be a discrete distribution because you can't have anything in between here. Uh, so either you got two, three, four, five, or six passengers. And then there's the associated probabilities uh, for uh, for Jeff there, or for, for Pete's Jeep tours during that day. Um, so it's a probability of 0.15, he'll have two passengers, probability of 0.25, he has three passengers, etc., etc. And just again to double check that this is a true probability model, this is a pr appropriate. Uh, each of these individual probabilities should be between 0 and 1, and when we add these all up, it should also uh, equal 1. And it does. So here's the distribution of. Uh, this probability model off to the side. You can see it looks relatively normal. So we can calculate the mean as 3.75 and the standard deviation is 1.090. And again to review that we can go back to our calculator and I've already got that data typed in from that, that table and to review again how to find the mean and the standard deviation of a probability model. Again I've listed these X's are the different random variables the probability is P is associated with each of these. So again, we'd go menu, statistics, stat calculations, one variable statistics, one list. And my X list is coming from the X's. The frequency this is again the probabilities of each of those X's. So we're going to use the P value. And we can, I'm going to substitute this in and actually have that put into column C rather than column D. So then we can see it all on one screen. We can see that our mean was 3.75 and our standard deviation is at 1.08972. So again, going back, we can see 3.75 or 1.090. Uh, was, that was 3.75 was our mean, 1.090 uh, was our standard deviation. So again, they just rounded. So we go back to our presentation. 
mean and standard deviation. So we're going to look at uh, transforming this data. Pete charges $150 per passenger. So we can see that if he's got two passengers, two times 150 be 300, three times 150 be 450, four times 150 is 600. So in other words, what we're doing is we're multiplying each of these random variables by 150. So we can look at what happens when we multiply uh, by 150. Well, again, uh, multiplying, adding, subtracting, dividing it does not change the shape of the distribution. We'll still have the same general shape of the distribution. And what we'll see is that then if we multiply, uh, we can go through and calculate this the same way we did with the calculator. Uh, but if we do multiply the mean, 3.75 times 150 would be 562.50. And the standard deviation, 1.090 times 150 would be 163.50. So again, we rounded to the nearest uh, hundredth or the de two decimal places because we're dealing with money in this situation. So again, our shape doesn't change. Both our center and our spread would change by what we multiplied by. And again, so here's a summary of that again. Uh, the effect of a random variable of multiplying by a constant. What it does is it will multiply the measure of the center by whatever I multiplied by. It'll multiply the measure of spread by whatever I multiplied by in absolute value. And it does not change the shape of the distribution. So as with any data, if we multiply a random variable by a negative constant, our common measures of spread are multiplied by the absolute value. Again, so we don't uh, ever have a negative spread. Spread is always a measure, a positive measurement. So let's look at what happens if we just add a constant. So we'll pick up where we left off here. We've got uh, the money collected uh, by Pete's Jeep Tours. And uh, just review, that was our, our mean uh, for this data set and our standard deviation. So what happens uh, is Pete's got to uh, spend $100. He's going to collect $150 per passenger, but he also needs to uh, pay out $100. Uh, he's got $100 in expenses to buy permits, gas, and a ferry pass. So what we're going to do with each of these random variables is subtract $100 for each of these different trips. So you can see again that 600 minus 100 is 500. And again, we could go back in the calculator and calculate these things, but knowing how data transforms, uh, if we add or subtract a constant, again, it will not affect the shape of the distribution. The positions do, but the shape of the distribution is still the same. Our mean, uh, so if we are looking at transforming the mean, if we add or subtract uh, value to the uh, each value, it will uh, add or subtract the same amount to the mean. So you can see here that we subtracted $100 from the mean. But again, adding and subtracting does nothing to the spread, does nothing to the spread. So you can see that our spread stays the same. So again, shape doesn't change. Center changed by whatever we added or subtracted from here. In this case, we subtract 100 and our standard deviation, which is a measure of spread, does not change when we add or subtract. So again, summarizing the effect on a random variable of adding or subtracting a constant. Uh, if we add something to each measure, uh, uh, then the measure of center would change by whatever we add uh, added in other different locations, you know, be it mean, median, quartiles, percentiles. percentiles. Um, Adding that same number does not change the measure of spread. In other words, our standard deviation does not change. Also, range and IQR are the measures of spread. And again, does not change the shape of the distribution. Summarizing this mathematically, if we have uh, some new, this Y is uh, our new uh, data set, um, if we're going to find that, again, uh, we, we could be adding something to our original data set. X is our original random variable. We could be adding something to that, and we could also be multiplying by something there. So what we do know is whether I add and or I multiply uh, distribution by some constant, that shape does not change. It has the same shape. Here, 
This is our new mean, our new mean, both adding and multiplying the data set have an effect. But again, remember our order of operations, so we should multiply here first before we then add, uh, if we have two of those uh, transformations. And in standard deviation, for our new standard deviation, notice there's no A in, in this part here because adding a constant does not change a standard deviation. But if I multiply by some uh, constant, it will change. Uh, you'll take our old standard deviation, multiply it by our new standard, or new, by whatever the constant was to get our new standard deviation. And remember, uh, if we multiply by a negative, it's really multiplying by uh, positive because, again, standard deviation is a positive measurement. So, summary, linear transformations have similar effects on other measures of center. So again, we just talked about mean, but again, those transformations would affect the mean, quartiles, percentiles, and uh, spread, other things. You know, we talked about standard deviation, but other measures of spread are range and IQR. So whether we're dealing with data or random variables, the effects of a linear transformation are the same. So in other words, the same rules from Chapter 2 apply here in Chapter 6. And uh, these results do apply to both discrete. Our example here was a discrete random variable, but it also applies to continuous random variables as well. So at this point, we'll stop at this halfway point in Section 6.2, and uh, you should be able to go to uh, your assignment and be able to complete uh, uh, problems 27 through 30, 35, 37, 39 through 41, 43, and 45. Thank you, and good luck on your assignment.